Hi! In this tutorial, we are going to use future value concepts to estimate how much money you'll save over a given amount of time if you make annual deposits in your savings account. And we call those annual deposits, or perhaps they're monthly deposits, annuities. And an annuity is a series of equal payments made over a specified period of time. So examples of an annuity might be um, a salaried employee's monthly paycheck. They receive the same amount on the first of every month. Or something like a car payment that you make. You make the same payment to the bank every month. Or a regular allowance. Say your parents deposit $1,000 into your account on the first of each month. Those are annuities. A regular payment of an identical amount, evenly spaced, monthly, annually, biannually. So one way that we use annuities is having a savings plan. Say you decide um, each year when you get your Christmas gift from your grandmother that instead of spending it, you're going to deposit it into the bank. And you're interested to see how much money you're going to have at the end of 10 years if you continue to deposit this money. So let's start with a few of our assumptions. Let's assume that grandma gives us $1,000 per year and that we can invest it in the bank at an interest rate of 8% and that we're going to look to see how this will grow over an assumed period of 10 years. I have my chart set out where I've got my year, my account balance at the beginning of the year, the deposit I'm going to make at the beginning of the year, the interest that I'll earn on the deposit that I have made and also the account balance I've had at the beginning of the year and then I'll sum that up to see how much I have at the end of the year. If I'm going to do 10 years, and I'm going to start now, during my first year, I start the year with a zero dollar balance. However, I make my first deposit. My deposit's going to be a thousand dollars. I give it an absolute reference so I can allow, I can drag my cells down um, to maintain my formula. And then the interest that I earn during the year is going to be equal to the deposit that I make multiplied by 8%. I'm also going to give that an absolute reference. You may wonder why I used 1 plus the interest rate in our previous chapter's work, but this time it's just the interest rate. When we use 1 plus the interest rate, that gives us the balance. When we just use the interest rate multiplied by the deposit, it gives us only the interest. So at the end of the year, I'm going to have what I started with, zero dollars, the deposit I made, which is a thousand dollars, and the interest that I've earned during the year, which is my eighty dollars. Next year, I will have in the bank on the very first of the year, $1,080. So the end of the year represents something like December 31st. The beginning of the year represents January 1st. I have the same amount. It's only one day different. I make the same deposit. My interest that I earned during the year is going to be equal to what I started with plus what I earned. I'm sorry, plus what I deposited. I put that in parentheses, multiplied by my interest rate. The reason for that is I had $1,000, $1,080 at the beginning of the year, plus the $1,000 I deposited, and they've sat in the bank all year earning interest, so I earned my full 8% on both of them. If I put an absolute reference on my interest rate, I can pull it down and use it in a little bit. And then here at the end of the year, I'm going to have my beginning balance plus my deposit that I made plus the interest that I've earned and that end of the year balance is going to carry over to the next day and start my beginning of the year balance. So we could do this year by year for 10 years but we don't have to. There's an easier way. What we can do to speed it up is we can drag down our formula in two steps. Our first step to drag down our formula is to drag down the deposit, the interest earned, and the total in the account at the end of our year. If we've forgotten any absolute references, this is where we'll find them. We highlight all three rows, we click on the handle, we drag it down one. And our second step is to highlight 
all four columns and drag it down the rest of the way. Since we're not getting any funny signals, no odd looking numbers, it looks right. We realize we know that we did all our absolute references in the right place. So I'm going to format it currency with no decimals. You see that I missed one. And we can see that at the end of 10 years, we are going to have. $15,645. So we don't have to do it that way every single time, right? We did it this way to illustrate how each year we earn interest on the deposit we made plus the beginning balance. And this is how compound interest works. You earn interest on the deposits you make, but every year that interest carries over. As you earn interest, you then earn interest on the interest that you've earned. We can do it an easier way. There's two ways we can do this. We can just use a formula. We can do it all in one cell. We don't have to make this chart. You'll make it you know, as practice, but once you get going, you won't need to make them all the time. In our dialog box, I'm going to use look for the FV function, and that means future value. When it comes up, I have a number of boxes. I've got my rate box. I've got my n peer box, that means my number of periods or my number of years in this example. I've got my payment, and a payment is a word for that regular deposit um, or the regular salary. It's the payment is the amount of the annuity, whether or not you're making a car payment or saving or receiving a payment. It doesn't matter. PV is present value. We're gonna, we don't need that in this example, so we're not going to use it. That would be if we started with some money. And type basically means when do we start? Do we start at the beginning of the period? Today, which is what we did. We're going to start with our first deposit on the very first day of the year. Or do we start at the end of the year? Zero. So if you leave anything out, it'll be zero. But we're going to make our deposit at the beginning of the year, so we need to put that one in there. So our rate is 8%. Our number of periods is 10 years. Our payment, here's a funny Excel quirk, is you have to enter money that you're saving as a negative number, otherwise your, your balance will come out negative. And then if I hit return, I get $16,645, my same answer that I had before. And so I got this using the dialog box. I can also calculate the formula, or the answer to this formula, using the formula where I don't need to open the dialog box. So I click equals, and then I know that I'm using the FV function, right? We saw that when we used the dialog box. And then I hit a parenthesis, and once I do that, all of these numbers that were in our dialog box come up right here, right? My rate, 8%. My number of periods, 10. My payment, is a thousand dollars but I enter it as a negative number so that it all works out right. When I hit comma it's present value. See how the present value, it becomes bold, but both present value and type are in brackets. They're in brackets because if you ignore them and you don't enter anything the function will still work. They're optional. I just hit a comma again right away to transfer myself to type and because I'm starting at the beginning of the period I enter that parentheses, I'm sorry, I enter that one so that it knows that I made my first deposit at the beginning of the year. And I hit return, and I get the same answer, albeit with 49 extra cents. But since I have that hidden, you don't need to know it for the other ones as well. They're, they're hiding, right? If I add decimals to any of these other numbers, it's 49 cents as well. So that is an example of calculating the future value of an annuity uh, to see how much you'd save over a period of years using the concepts offered by Future Value. I hope it was helpful.